Take a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Aisha Al-Mazmi and Mikhail Atia. Good afternoon, people of Shards and across the UAE. I hope you're having a fantastic start for a week. I know the grind keeps on going. And uh, here on the show, I'll be running the show solo as we speak for the next three weeks because my lovely co-host, Aisha Al-Mazmi, is taking a well-deserved holiday so don't worry i have you and you have me and welcome guys to the afternoon cut up with myself Mikel atlia from 425 a show about everything and uh, all the things that you may be talking with your friends about like in terms of things that you geek out uh, like from movies to video games and today is a very gamey uh, i would say hour because we had a huge announcement last thursday from the renowned polish studio uh, cd project red they came out with their live stream called the Night City Wire, where they go into into a lot of detail uh, for their upcoming game, Cyberpunk 2077. And that's what I'm going to be talking about. Some new features, some new discussions, uh, things about classes, things about the environment, the world of Cyberpunk, and what can we expect. And also, a surprising collaboration with an anime studio. So... I got all the details for that, and I can't wait to share it with you. As well as there was a, uh, you know, if everyone knows, Amazon is working on sort of like a under-the-radar Lord of the Rings series. And just recently, they put out a casting call for what they've dubbed Harry, Burned, and Funny-Looking Actors. I got all the details for that and much more, so be sure to tune in. And the text lines are up. Don't be shy to text in and say hello and how's your week doing. I'd love to hear from you, so text in. 4215 and to sell out or do would love to hear from you but coming up guys we're going to be having that cyberpunk 2077 live stream highlights and yeah let's do this right here on the afternoon karak make a hot cuppa and relax it's afternoon karak with aisha al mazmi and mikhail atia on pulse 95 Hello and welcome back to the Afternoon Cut-Up. On this hour, we're going full video games because one of the biggest, most highly anticipated games that is coming out later this year is Cyberpunk 2077. And it was actually supposed to come out back in April, but of course, with the pandemic happening, uh, of course, it, the developers had to admit that they needed more time to polish out the game. So they delayed it until September. And then unfortunately, they delayed it again till November. November 12 and a lot of fans who really love the studio CD Projekt Red for their games like The Witcher 3 and Gwent. Uh, people are really looking at Cyberpunk 2077 as the game that will set a new standard for just the, the quality, the the immersion, the experience that you get from uh, like the future of gaming. And so what makes Cyberpunk so, so I would say, it carries so much hype is because there's a lot of expectations a lot of things that developers have been hinting on as to what this game is really going to be like and it's just not going to be a typical rpg sci-fi game it's actually at times feels like it's it's a really polished self-contained immersive experience that it not a lot of games out there could even come close to and so uh one thing that fans have been really excited for is the night city lot night city wire live stream and it was basically the developers going into a bit of a detail into some of the gameplay features some of the modes some of the uh, I would say like quality of life improvements that players can ex expect when the game comes out. And one of the things they showcased is something called the brain dance mechanic. And so brain dance is a recording, it's basically the ability to record somebody else's experience unless you live through their memories. So it's basically hacking into NPCs, non-player, non-playable characters and acquiring the, the ability to see, see through them, smell, uh, sound, and everything that they experience will go through the brain dance system that you're using. And so there was actually some gameplay preview uh, as you as a protagonist showing that showing that you are able to live through the memories of somebody else's you know situation and you can use it as a form of analysis to look into certain scenes and get a different perspective 
and it's almost like a detective mode because sometimes not every character you encounter is who they seem and so having this an analysis mechanic allows you to look into certain secrets or a certain perspective that could basically change your personal decision in the game or sometimes having that little bit of information that leeway will give you an advantage in a and in a very important dialogue situation which could impact not only your character but the overall story and it seems really interesting and not a lot of games have something like this so and it fits in the context of cyberpunk because it's a world where people are mostly uh, cybernetic based you know like you're able to hack into their bodies and have this ability so having it built into the game and being something that players could use is what makes it super exciting other gameplay features they've shown during the night city wire is players will be working with a specific character named jackie on a hunt for a legendary chip of immortality a chip that allows it to be immortal and that's sort of like the general premise of what this game is about but Let's just say that there's more to this world than just this main story because uh, there's there's gangs, there's factions, uh, there's um, you know in different environments besides the city that really play a role in all of what you do in the game, and it really looks super flushed out. One of the things that they were talking more in detail was about the factions that you're going to pick in the game. There's going to be there's going to be three life paths life paths that you can go to one is you can work with you can become a corporate or you can become a street kid or a nomad and each of them have a very unique uh, sort of route in the story and where you're going to go and each of them provide a certain uh, level of just I would say distinctive experiences you know co being play playing corporate or playing nomad or street kid all offer a different I would say path into the story and where it's where it's gonna go and uh, a lot of reviewers who got the chance to play four or five hours at a game can can really guarantee that each route in the game is very different from one another it does come somewhat you know they all sort of connect eventually midway into the story to uh, to the main sort of like the main narrative of what cyberpunk 2077 but each of them offer a different scenario a different possible ending and that's what makes it so promising as a game because it seems that there's so many variations and player choice and, and, and the freedom in which how you're able to tackle every situation. So uh, if you didn't get the chance to watch uh, the Cyberpunk uh, 2077 Night City, why there are so many other things that I wish I could talk about, but I can just say that this game is looking to be very, very promising. So be sure to check out Night City Wire a live stream on YouTube. It's two hours long. It goes into a lot of depth into the, the features, the mechanics, what players can expect. And I want to hear from you guys. Text me 4215 and Slaughter Dude would love to hear from you. Have you watched it? Please share your first impressions and what you really, what is your expectations about this game? Because a lot of people are super excited. And one thing I, that came as a shock as well is that they announced that they're collaborating with a famous anime studio, Studio Trigger, to work on an anime. I got all the details for that and so much more, so be sure to stay tuned right here to the Afternoon Cut-Up. Pulse 95. Yes, we're continuing our discussion on the Night City Wire, a live stream that has given us an in-depth glimpse into the highly anticipated video game Cyberpunk 2077. Right before the break, I was talking about some of the gameplay features, some of the mechanics, and just world building uh, that really, I would say, define what this game is. And it's why it's got a lot of people excited and and just you know for me personally i trust that the studio behind it cd project red is going to do a phenomenal job a lot of people have been upset with the constant delays from the studio but we have to understand something guys we're in a pandemic and we you know things something as drastic as that event could ripple through the entire industry and they have gone uh, i would say have gone on record saying listen it's not, it's not that, you know, we're delaying because the game is, is not entirely finished. It's because they, they're following an ethics here that, you know, when the game is done, it will be done and it will take, and it will, and we will, and he, they will guarantee that any time 
they need they, to polish out the game. They're gonna they're gonna have to basically just announce it. So I don't mind. It's gonna come out on November 12th, and uh, that's three days right after my birthday. So that's probably the best gift I could personally ask for. And surprisingly enough, that wasn't just the only thing that CD Projekt previewed on the Night City Wire live stream on Thursday, but they also made a surprise announcement. And that is they're going to be partnering up with a Netflix and Studio Trigger, an anime studio and an animation studio. And they're going to be producing a new anime based on the cyberpunk universe called Cyberpunk Edge Runners. And while it's taking place in the same universe as the game, the series will feature new characters and a new story. Now, there weren't any teaser trailers shown. And, um, you know, the only thing basically was that it's a story. They, you know, they had a couple of the animators saying that uh, the story will focus on a street kid trying to survive in the future city, according to even news releases. Release, it's going to actually be a 10 episode story that will focus on this edge runner becoming an outlaw mercenary. And fans already know, I myself, that Studio Trigger is it's a world class anime uh, anime production studio. Some of the things they've worked on famously is the anime such as Kill La Kill, uh, Premiere, which was a film that came out recently. Darling and the Franks, a series that just came out last year as well, and Little Witch Academia. They're, I would say, their, I would say, their roster of anime is top notch, and it's up there with some of the greats. So the fact that this studio has handled is going to be taking the, basically creating this, is really promising, and I have no. I have no worries, no doubts at all that they're going to do a phenomenal job. Actually, someone from the uh, the team says that they've always loved cyberpunk as a genre, but always found it difficult to create as an original work. And this is why they're so excited to be working with CD Projekt Red on this project. It won't be easy, they said. <laughs> it won't be easy to please both games, uh, both game and anime fans, but they do love the challenge. And we're all excited for this. Besides the game, we're getting an anime. Isn't that really, really cool for me? who love anime anime series and a gamer it's a bit of like the best of both worlds so i want to hear from you guys texas 4215 in slaughter do how much are you hyped for not only the game but a cyberpunk anime series that's going to be coming out on netflix they said that the first season is scheduled to arrive on netflix on uh, in 2022 so this is hype guys this is i am so excited it's just it's like a it's a like you know already the game is is exciting enough but the fact that we're getting an anime you can really tell that cd project red is investing a lot of time a lot of effort and building up this franchise you know because it all started off as just a tabletop game board on um, you know that, that came out in the 90s and now it's becoming a fully flushed out franchise with video games with series and you know potential merchandise and i know they're also going to be working on a multiplayer game a year in and uh, to two years when uh, cyberpunk 2077 releases so this you know the cyberpunk franchise has is only just beginning and I know fans are super, super excited. So let's see what CD Projekt Red has in store, as well as the renowned Trigger Studio working on the cyberpunk anime. Really, really great news. And coming up next, I got some weird news for you. Amazon's Lord of the Rings series has just put out a casting call for Harry burned up funny looking actors. I think I might want to audition to this, and you might too. So I got all the details for it right here on the Afternoon Cuddock. Pulse 95. Hello and welcome back to the Afternoon Cuddock with myself, Mikel Ati. I'm running the show solo until Aisha gets back from her three-week well-deserved vacation. And uh, right before the break, I was talking about a Studio a Trigger in collaboration with CD Projekt Red to work on a Cyberpunk 2077 anime. If you want to check all the details for it, be sure to check out the Night City Wire livestream. It's two hours long. 
on YouTube, and I think they're going to be doing some episodic releases, uh, talking more in depth about the game and even this anime project. So if that's something you're interested in, please do check it out. So this next story is uh, something that really just surprisingly caught my eye. Now, we know that James Cameron's Avatar sequels are already back in production in New Zealand, and the next massive Hollywood project's expected to resume filming is also Amazon's Lord of the Rings television series. And we all know that Lord of the, you know, Lord of the Rings is best filmed at New Zealand because of Peter Jackson. Thank you, Peter. And um, what's interesting is that recently, the New Zealand uh, talent agency, BGT, Actors, Actor, Actors Models and Talent, has issued an open casting call for what they've dubbed funny-looking actors or people with scars and, and burns and missing bones and anything that is, I would say, peculiarly weird. And I like this because it, it raises a lot of questions. We know that Amazon's uh, TV series is going to be set a couple of thousands of years before the events of Lord of the Rings. It's going to be set in the second of uh, the second age of Middle Earth. Now, I'm not going to try to be here at, like a nerd for Lord of the Rings, but basically it's a it's a time when Sauron was crafting the Rings of Power, and there are other like, I would say, powerful races at play, such as uh, the High Elves, the Numenors, and, you know, the Dwarves and such and such. So, for them to be casting call for funny looking actors who have any kind of like burns and you know weird facial long skinny uh you know like like facial burns and long skinny limbs and scars and deep cheekbones i would say because lord of the rings is comprised of various races we have we have the elves we have the dwarves we have the ents we have the humans, and um, we also have the orcs. So my theory is that they're looking to acquire uh, their hands on people who have these weird, you know, you know, looks to them, so that they can be selected for the races of orc. And I'm not trying to like discriminate or anything, but you know, with the one thing about the original Lord of the Rings that people praise it for is the use of practical effects compared to Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy, where a lot of that film was, you know, very heavily CGI, and people felt like that, you know, somewhat lost the charm of what Lord of the Rings was all about. So I think they're hearkening back to Peter Jackson's old style of, of uh, production, you know, to have uh, genuine practical effects, and what better way to do it and then, you know, not see, having CGI looking orcs, but people who look the part or at least are close to looking that part. And it's actually looking for people of all ages and shapes and sizes. So if you're looking into getting, you know, a gig at the Amazon's Lord of the Rings series, and you have to know this is a really big budget series in the works. And if you ever had a dream of working at a Lord of the Rings franchise, I, you know, honestly, I, I think I might go for this. I'm funny looking. I got a weird looking beard. My face is disproportionate. <laughs> you know, just self deprecating humor. But uh, I think anybody could get a chance to apply for this because a while back, they were actually looking for actors who were particularly tall and even short but also noticeably hairy. And I think that's a casting call for the race of dwarves. And because that's sort of like their prominent characteristics is that they're short and really hairy. So this time around, they're looking for, you know, uh, funny looking burnt up people with scars and weird, you know, long skinny limbs and no discrimination whatsoever. Because if you do fit the part, hey, you get a Lord of the Rings gig. And I think that's better than than you can ever dream for, you know, especially if you're a nerd and a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings franchise. But do let me know. Text me 4215 into Do What do you think of this casting call? And I want to hear from you guys. Would you audition for this? I know I would because it would be a dream come true. But is it also a dream of yours? Let me know right here on the Afternoon cut I'm going to be wrapping up the hour with a final suggestion. So stay tuned for that. It's almost 5 p.m. That was Afternoon Karak. For dessert, Aisha and Mikhail suggest... Hello and welcome back to the Afternoon Karak. And we're coming to the end of the hour here, nearing the, I would say, the last hour before the sun sets. And it's okay. It's always nice to, when we're having such a fun time that time flies. And... Uh, 
I'm going to have to leave the desk for Anna Schofield and Big Hass uh, for Yellow Home. That's going to be going from 5 till 8. But before I leave, we always have tradition here on the Afternoon Cutter to give you guys, to leave you guys with a final suggestion. And so today my suggestion is if you ever feel overwhelmed by the mess in your house, try to clean one thing at a time. And, you know, for me, what I do is if I have, like, big piles of mess that I have to deal with, I actually deal with one pile of mess every single day. And that way, you slowly but steadily get things done until you acquire the habit of cleaning a lot more in a single session. And, you know, it's, it's just the way how things are in life is that when you become overwhelmed, you got to take things one step at a time, one session at a time. Because over time, you know, it all builds up to, uh, I would say, like to benefit you, to give you a habit of being able to do a lot more than you did the first time. And I think that's a great, that's a great little suggestion there, especially if you're, you know, you're busy with work and life and, you know, sometimes you just forget to clean up your bedroom. So, like I said, one thing at a time, even one thing every day until you grow the habit to do a lot more. And that is my suggestion to you guys, and I wish you a wonderful day, a fantastic day, and I'll be seeing you guys again here, same time, same vibes, only here on Pulse 95. Pulse 95.